Thank you for joining me for this edition of Rattling the Bars. I'm your host, Mass Musa. Imagine witnessing someone being smothered to death with a pillar. The person being smothered has been convicted of a capital offense and a sentence of death, and this is the state's form of execution. He's being smothered to death after other forms of execution were unsuccessful. Even after he's dead, they continue to smother him 15 more minutes. This will be the form of execution of Alabama death row prisoner Kenneth Smith. But instead of a pillow, the state of Alabama will use nitrogen, hypoxide, gas. Would this be considered cruel? Would this be considered unusual? The Eighth Amendment of the United States Constitution protects criminal defendants from cruel and unusual punishment. Joining me to talk about the case of Kenneth Smith and Alabama's execution method is investigative reporter Lee Hedgebeth. Welcome to Rattling the Bar, Lee. Thank you so much for having me. Lee, tell our audience a little bit about yourself before we unpack the case of uh, Kenneth Smith. Sure. So my name is Lee Hedgepeth. I'm an investigative reporter. I write TRED, which is a newsletter of investigative journalism based here in Alabama. Um, and I'm, I've covered issues around criminal justice and the death penalty for around a decade now. So I've been there at the prison Holman Correctional down in um, South Mobile, um, Mobile County, uh, towards Mobile County in the south. Uh, part of the state uh, about eight times for different executions and have witnessed four executions. So uh, death penalty is an issue that's really important to me and something that I think journalists should be covering all across the country. Okay, and and, and the case of, of Kenneth Smith is really uh, epitomized the insanity associated with the death penalty because uh, Kenneth Smith, and you can you can correct me if I'm wrong, they attempted to execute Kenneth Smith before with the lethal injection, and it was unsuccessful. Uh, and then after that, uh, because they couldn't get the chemicals for lethal injection, the state of Alabama just put the death penalty on hold. And now they come up with this new form of uh, execution, which is uh, some form of a gas, and you can explain that a little bit more, right? But the point that we want to unpack is how did this come about? How did this particular methodology come about? Sure. So for years now, lethal injection has become more and more difficult for states to carry out for a variety of reasons, one of which you just pointed out, which is the difficulty in getting the drugs, right? So most of the lethal injection protocols that states use um, in these executions call for either one or multiple drugs that are made by usually European drug manufacturers. Well, no country in Europe has the death penalty, and Europe has laws right. against uh, such companies, you know, providing the chemicals. Right, and right. so a lot of these companies have said, look, we're not going to provide these chemicals for, for execution. So that's become, um, you know, a challenge for states mm -hmm. that continue to pursue the death penalty. We saw Mississippi, for example, the FDA raided Mississippi a few years ago and took some of the drugs they had and said, you can't, you know, use street drugs effectively to, to right. execute people. So here in Alabama, um, we've kind of had the same um, types of difficulties. And we had three executions back to back, beginning with the execution of a man named Joe Nathan James mm -hmm. um, that were that were botched. And so uh, the first one, Joe Nathan James execution, um, they ended up performing what's called a cut down, which is a rudimentary procedure where if they can't gain access to the inmates veins, they'll cut and try to get to the inmate's veins that way, like using a scalpel. Mm. Right. Um, so that was what was done in Joe Nathan James' case. Um, so Alabama, for multiple executions, has had difficulty in accessing people's veins, right? So we don't know the um, medical background of the people who are on the execution team. Mm -hmm. That's one thing um, that we've been, that I've been trying to, to get more right, information right. on. Um, but, you know, the standard, the codes of ethics for nurses and for doctors require that they don't participate in execution. So these folks that are, you know, trying to access the, the veins of inmates, they're not, um, you know, they're going against the code of ethics of their right, own profession right. by participating in this process. And so uh, Alabama's had difficulty. So twice Alabama had to abandon their attempts to execute folks because they couldn't access the veins. And one of those cases was the case of Kenny Smith. Come on. So, um, so Kenny Smith was uh, convicted of a, a murder that occurred in 1988. So he's served decades now for this crime already, um, been punished in that way. 
And so Alabama, uh, you know, attempts to execute him via lethal injection, and that's unsuccessful. They aren't able to access his vein. They try for hours, actually, to access his vein. So if you can imagine, you mm-hmm. know, the psychological torture right, of thinking right. that you're going to be executed. At one point um, in a court filing, he describes the process uh, of them strapping him down in the execution chamber of these members of the execution team doing things like slapping his neck to try to gain access to right, veins right, wherever right. they could. Right. So you can imagine, you know, right, the right. torturous situation this is in. And so they were unsuccessful um, in that attempt. Um, so eventually they abandon uh, just before midnight when the execution warrant expires, they abandon their attempt to execute him. And now we're a few months later and Alabama has decided to move to this new um, method of execution called nitrogen hypoxia. So this method of execution's never been tested before, never been used by government anywhere in the world. So uh, effectively, the method is um, so they will put a mask on the condemned individual, and they will slowly take the oxygen out, leaving only nitrogen for the person to breathe. And so effectively, that'll suffocate the person and lead to their death. Um, so this hasn't been tested anywhere, but Alabama says, you know, if we can't successfully lethally inject people, this is the the route that we're going to take. And 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 when you mentioned the protocol, and here, be, uh, I was reading where uh, because they have redacted so much of the documentation relative to the methodology, to this particular form of execution, that uh, it's un- it's a lot of uncertainty as to the effect. And here we're talking about uh, cruel and unusual punishment because regardless of what we think should happen or we pro death penalty or not, it's still standard reason that the uh, execution has to be, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, uh, humane in regards to the person that's being executed. Have they been able to, or have you been able to glean from uh, your investigation the uh, the problems associated with this particular form of execution is gas. Yeah, so Alabama historically has not provided really any information publicly related to its execution protocols. So when they do release them, uh, like you mentioned, they're heavily redacted documents that don't really provide a perfect picture of what they plan to happen. And we know, of course, Alabama's plans don't always come to fruition when it comes to these things. Mm-hmm. They have a checkered history. Um, But what we do know is that nitrogen is a very dangerous gas. Um, So, um, you know, viewers may uh, think, you know, nitrogen is in the air we breathe already, so why is it a problem? Well, the type of nitrogen that's used is compressed nitrogen. So it has Mm -hmm. to be put in a tank so that they can, you know, use it um, as they want to in these executions. And those types of um, nitrogen that are in tanks, compressed nitrogen, Um, can easily fill up a room. It's an odorless gas. You can't smell it. You can't see it. (laughs) And it can quickly fill up a room. So there are hundreds and hundreds of cases around the country where there are workplaces where nitrogen is used frequently. So there are places like poultry plants um, and things like that. So Mm -hmm. there was a case in Georgia, I believe, um, a few years back where um, there was a nitrogen leak. And these workers who worked in this poultry plant – a lot of Hispanic workers were um, working in the poultry plant, couldn't see nitrogen, couldn't smell the nitrogen, right. but there was a leak. They all start passing out. Well, other folks don't realize what's happening, and they see folks passing out, and the natural reaction is to go and help, right? So when they go and help, they begin to pass out too. So this is a pattern that we see in these nitrogen workplace accidents, is that when the rescuers come to help people, they also are susceptible to the same nitrogen um, right. that the folks who passed out were. So, you know, nitrogen is a very dangerous chemical. And what we haven't been able to see from Alabama is what is the process that you're using to protect not just the individuals in the execution chamber, the members of the press who were there, the family members, both of the condemned inmate and of the victim's family, right? Because mm-hmm. they're present as well. Um, but what about the whole population of the of the prison? Prison so, population, um, right, right, right. So all and of these, it, yeah. you know, cool. these, uh, you know, tanks have to be stored on site, right? So what if somebody, what if there is a puncture like there was in the Georgia facility? What if, what if there is some type of accident where this colorless, odorless gas is, you know, harming not just the people that Alabama is targeting, but everyone else do? And we already, and we already know that 
based on your your previous observation that the when the lethal injection, the people that was administering the lethal injection, they was just like uh got their training off the back of, back of a matchbook. And so uh or if they are in the profession, they 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 violating their oath to not be a part of the execution. But stand the reason that they're not in the medical field because you can't find a vein. And but now we're looking at how do you train these people to administer this gas? Because, like you say, they strap a mask on. Who's to say that the mask is is not leaking? The mask is covering the entire face. And because we don't know if we can't smell it, we don't have no way of detecting it, uh, you go in there to execute one person uh, under the pretense that he committed a crime, capital offense, and wind up killing, like, Eight or nine other people, or mm. hospitalized eight or nine people. Has uh, mm. what has the Supreme Court said about this particular methodology, this nitrogen gas? So the Supreme Court hasn't weighed in on this particular methodology before. So one of the things the Supreme mm. Court has said is that um, if a person who's on death row is um, challenging their method of execution, and this this in itself seems cruel to me, but the Supreme Court has said you have to have an alternate method to propose. <laughs> uh, so you have to tell the court, look, you know, I don't want you to kill me this way. So here's the way that I propose you do kill me, which seems in itself to be cruel to me. Um, but that's the Supreme Court precedent. So um, the Supreme Court hasn't weighed in on this methodology. But as we all know, with the six to three majority, conservative right, majority right, on right, Supreme right. Court. We already know it's going to go. Right. And, so, but in, and in terms of like, I thought, you know, and in, in my mind was that once you have a failed attempt of execution, does not the person, shouldn't the person be exonerated? <laughs> if you can't kill me, uh, should not be given the benefit? Or is that just, ide- that's just being idealistic? Well, I think there's a certain amount of ideal- idealism certainly there. But one of the things that I think is uh, certainly the case here is there are very few execution survivors in America, if anywhere, right? So you typically, when states try to execute someone, it, even if they have to, do, you know, try and try over and over again for hours, they're eventually, quote unquote, successful in killing the person. These, this is an extremely rare case in the sense that they weren't able, they tried to execute him and they didn't. So I think one of the strongest challenges that Mr. Smith may have when it comes to getting um, courts uh, to, uh, you know, side with him in an appeal would be challenging trying to execute him for a second time as cruel and unusual. I can't think of anything more unusual than trying to execute somebody for a second time. Right. Yeah. And I, and I think, and I, and when I was looking up the eighth amendment, they, uh, and I told you when they came out with the Furman case, the Furman case was a case that they used to really examine the death penalty. And and they, they did a historical analysis of how they was, you know, utilizing execution, uh, how they was beheading people, how they was uh, putting people's bodies up on stakes, putting their heads. You know, the cruelty was like some beyond a person's imagination. But what, what, where, where are we at with as far as Kenneth Smith and in terms of uh, the process? Uh, he's waiting for what? He's waiting for the court to decide whether or not to stay or to go forward. Yeah, so right now, um, the Attorney General's office here in Alabama, the Alabama Attorney General is a very, um, you know, bloodthirsty when it comes to capital mm-hmm. punishment um, um, and has uh, challenged even the governor in the state to be to be more, uh, you know, in favor of the death penalty. And so at this point, they've announced that they will be asking for this execution date using nitrogen hypoxia. So that request has gone to the Alabama Supreme Court, and the Alabama Supreme Court, to my knowledge, has never rejected a request for right, an execution right. day. So that will likely happen in the coming days. And then once that happens, um, Alabama's governor will decide the particular time um, and the time frame of the execution. And 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 I know, I think it was, I read a book where uh, one individual was on death row, and I'm, I think it was in Alabama called The Sun Never Shines. And mm-hmm. he was saying that that's when they had the, I think they had the electric chair. Right, or, and uh, it, he was on the tier, and the close proximity of of the electric chair to the tier was such that whenever they execute somebody, you had the stench, you had the, the you know the whole 
atmosphere changed in terms of like a, a, a more bleak, light type atmosphere. Where is, where is Kenneth Smith? How is that right now? So Kenny Smith, along with all of the male uh, folks who are on death row, are housed in um, a prison called Holman Correctional Facility, which is in Atmore, mm -hmm. Alabama, in the southern part of the state. <clears throat> so up until um, maybe the week of his execution, he'll be housed in, on, you know, in the same death row cell that he's been in um, for his entire detention. So um, one of the things, you know, you mentioned kind of the impact on other folks when a, a person is executed. One of the things that has struck me in covering um, executions is when the journalists go into the prison, we can see all of the windows of uh, uh, folks who are on death row. Right. And and they use the windows as a method of communication. So they'll put signs up. So right. um, I was there for the execution of Joe Nathan James um, a few years ago. And um, the family of the victim in that case was opposed to his execution. So, you know, in a lot of these cases, Alabama's officials and other state officials will say, we're doing this for the victims. Well, right. in this case, the daughters of the victim and the brother of the victim said, please don't execute this person, right? Don't do it in our name. So when I go to witness the execution, we're going into the execution chamber and we can see these windows of death row. And in one of the windows, uh, there's a sign that says the family is against it. This is a murder. Right, right. And so I think, you know, a lot of us, obviously, and the most important thing is, the, you know, the cruelty to Kenneth Smith in this case of them trying to execute him again. But I think it's also important to think about the impact that this type of trauma has, not just on him, but on all of the folks on death row when they see, you know, the state trying again and again to execute the same person in such a, you know, seemingly cruel and unusual manner in violation of the constitution that protects all of us, not just those of us who aren't on death row. Right. And, and uh, his co-defendant has been, was executed already, right? And, Correct. And one of, mm, go ahead, sure. go ahead. one of the things to note in this case though, so um, the murder was of a woman named Liz Sennett. And her husband was the person who contracted the murder. He was a pastor, and he killed himself after the plot came to light. So the person who initially you know, was responsible for all of this took his own life. So there's no you know, sense of closure or justice in, in that way. And all of these additional lives that are being impacted afterward is, is definitely something to think about. Right, and, and they, do, they, they have a tendency to do that, to, um pour it on when they get an opportunity. But in terms of Kenneth Smith, have you have you been able to visit him or you're not allowed? So I, so I haven't been able to visit him in person. I have been able to speak with him off and on. So I spoke with him just after um, the state tried to execute him. And one of the things that he said was, you know, the state is going to regret having let me out of that room. So I think one of the things that's important to Kenny is to make sure that any legal challenges or any legacy that he has is a legacy that helps those folks that are also on death row and a legacy that, you know, challenges Alabama's willingness to, to execute people in cruel and unusual ways. And, and, and in that regard, I noticed that, uh, you know, most states have gotten, have gotten away from the death penalty and, uh, you know, but Alabama, like you say, is, is, intransigent when it comes to this and we have an attorney general down there that what that's his polit that's his political platform i kill people i kill people without remorse or and i kill people with methodologies that is cruel and unusual and barbaric but kill them i will is that his mantra yeah i, I think he it seems to me as though the attorney general here is angling for governor Mm -hmm. um, and I think that will be the platform that he will run on. Yeah. And and as kind of like I, I see, I heard what you say in terms of uh, you know, where his state of mind is, is as far as like what do you want to <clears throat> to come out of this, right? But mm -hmm. you know, after the, the you know, I'm quite sure after the failed attempts, I'm quite sure he's been traumatized. And in this regard, how do they how do do the institution provide any type of mental help for them because I guess they, you know, in, in their mind, well, you're going to get killed anyway. So get you Yeah. Killed. So I've spoken to a lot of people about this and I don't think that he is receiving, certainly don't think he's receiving the type of therapy that he would need. 
um, in the wake of such a traumatic event um, as the state trying to end your life. Um, one of the things that um, I've talked to other folks about is that, you know, other folks that know him, who knew him before and know him now, um, who are on death row, say, you know, he seems to be kind of in a trance, right? Like, it's kind of surreal mm -hmm. surviving an yeah. execution. And one of the things that um, I've asked uh, the Alabama Department of Corrections about and haven't heard back about is that the same individuals that were the ones who tried to execute him, the officials, the guards that mm -hmm. were involved in that process, that were there in that room, are still people that are around him every day. So for Kenny, you can imagine how traumatizing <laughs> it is to see yeah. your executioner, you know, come to give you lunch every day or whatever the case may be. So yeah. I think that's something that we should also think about is the impact, the re-traumatization that's happening when he sees these staff members that participated in the first attempt at execution. And this is the very thing that the, the Eighth Amendment is supposed to protect against. This is the cruelty that they talk about, cruel and young, you punch, that you attempt the execution, but then, not only that, but then have the very people be back in an environment where uh, you're being revisited by all the people that's involved in the process. You're not getting no mental health because you, because of your circumstances that you're on death row. Therefore, you shouldn't, your mentality or your state of mind is of no importance then because in the state of Alabama in particular, they already got their, it set up that, well, we're going to execute you. You're on death row, and you've been on death row since, how long have you been on death row? Since the 80s? Yeah, so, so uh, the murder occurred in 88. I think he was convicted in the early 90s, so he's been on death row for, you know, three decades or more at this point. Yeah, you've been on death row for 30 for 30 or more years, and, and, and then even after all that, you failed to attempt to execute you. Where's the humanity and where's the, the justification in that? And what about the victims, uh, the family members of, of the deceased? Where are they, where so are they at? Mm -hmm. So we haven't heard from the family members, so I, that's something that I try, I think is very important is to see where they stand. And um, so far, Liz and its family hasn't been willing to speak with the press. Right. And I, and, and, and that's, that's kind of mind boggling because, well, like you say, the, the husband was, the principal involved and he took his life. Sure. And sure. so that's questionable like as to why why he did what he did and in terms of the the whole thing. But going forward, what what do you want our audience to to know about this process, this this methodology? Sure. So you know, one of the things that I think is the most important for people to know is that this method of execution which they call nitrogen hypoxia, but I call nitrogen suffocation because that's what it is, is a method that has never been tested before. Not by Russia, not by North Korea, not by any communist government you've ever heard of. Mm, yes, right. this, is a, this is a method, this is completely untested. And I just ask folks, you know, read the Eighth Amendment that bans cruel and unusual punishment in the United States, regardless of whether you've committed a crime or not. And think to yourself, is this method of execution taking away the oxygen that someone breathes? Mm. Do you find that to be cruel or unusual? So I just ask, you know, folks to, to ask themselves that question. And if they if they feel like, you know, it maybe it is isn't a cruel it is a cruel and unusual method, you know, reach out to, to uh, organizations like Project Hope to abolish the death penalty here in Alabama or nonprofit organizations wherever you are that are involved with the death penalty and, um, you know, get involved on the issues, vote on issues like this. President Biden, you know, we're talking about state level death penalty cases here, but there, there's a federal death row too. And That's President right. Biden has the power right now to today with a stroke of the pen to, to commute every single one of those death sentences and end the possibility that someone like Trump gets in office and does what he did at the end of his last term, which is execute people over and over again at the end of the term. So, mm. you know, if, if you care about the death penalty, if you are opposed to the death penalty, write somebody like Biden and say, look, solve this problem today, because that's something that's within his power. And how can our, how can our audience uh, get in touch with you or stay on top of what you're doing? Sure. So you can follow me on Twitter. You can also go, um, my, my Twitter handle is at Lee underscore Hedgepeth. You can also just go to treadbylee.com. So that's a newsletter I have, and that's T-R-E-A-D by B-Y-L-E-E, Lee.com. 
Okay, thank you, Lee. And you rattled the ball. You really rattled the balls today. Uh, nitrogen suffocation, and this is exactly what it is. And we want our audience to really look at this, because at the end of the day, it's the taxpayers that's paying for this. And so the tax, you have to ask yourself as a taxpayer, am I putting my money into someone being suffocated to death, to death, take all the oxygen out of them, and let them die? I'm suffocating. I'm not. There's, 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 there's no humanity associated with it. It's torturous. It's no way of looking at it other than that. And the only reason why we're doing it is because we're in a, a state where we have a attorney general that's a, a blood sucker, and and he's he's he got blood on his mind. He got blood on his hands. And uh, Kenneth Smith is just a victim of this process. We thank you for. Uh, uh, enlighten our audience on this, this process. And we ask our audience to be mindful of this type of reporting that we do. Because only you're going to get this only news on the Real News Network. You're not going to get this news nowhere else. And we're not uh, telling you that how you should weigh in on the death penalty or not the death We're asking you to weigh in on what is humane and what isn't humane. We're asking you to look at your humanity and see if, if your humanity can be measured up against what's going on in Alabama with this nitrogen suffocation. But that's all it is. And we ask that you continue to support the real news and rally about because the only way you're going to get this information is the only way you're going to be educated about this process. Thank you very much, Lee. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for talking about this important topic. Thank you so much for watching The Real News Network, where we lift up the voices, stories, and struggles that you care about most. And we need your help to keep doing this work. So please, tap your screen now, subscribe, and donate to The Real News Network. Solidarity forever.